have today for Championship Wrestling. Oh, but by yeah. golly, I'll tell you, it's all in keeping with an outstanding program we've got lined up. What you got? Opener today. The animal's going to be in here. He will be battling the king, Jerry Lawler. Well, that'll be a first opener. in their single match. Yes, you indeed. Then we'll have Eddie Gilbert in here. He'll also be in a single match. Then comes a tag team match in which the new generation will be going against Bill Hickerson and the Spoiler. That's all not right. all. right. That sounds good. Sure does. Expiration of time. You mean there's coming. more. There's more. Whoa. Listen to this. The Nightmares with Jimmy Hart will be going against the Rock and Roll Express. Wow. And an expiration mm -hmm. of time match. Son of a gun. We got a bunch of it. I'll tell you what. I'm looking forward to every single bit of it. You sit right there. We're going to be back. We'll have some of that first action with the king in the ring against the animal. Okay, we got the uh, ring empty right at the moment. It's going to be filling up. Now, what is this? Jimmy. You know what, boy? You know, I am a, such a busy, busy, busy man. You know, everywhere I go, people say, you know, you're going to hours a day, Jimmy Hart, when you do all your activities. I've got the greatest wrestlers in the world, so what I had to do, baby, I hired me a little assistant, the beekeeper, baby. He's going to be with Jimmy Hart everywhere he goes from now on, baby. Cut me some slack. And I want you people to give him the respect that you give to me, okay? Okay. <laughs> Jimmy, that's only fair. <laughs> Anybody's associated with, hear the, hear the chant, Hart is a wimp. Jimmy Hart has, a, has at least one thing to his credit. He inspired the wimp function. <laughs> Here's the king, and we're ready for the introduction. Well, we may not have time, Dave. I think you're right. We're underway here. The animal goes after Lawler over in the corner. That's the animal out of parts unknown. Lawler from Memphis. Referee Jerry Calhoun's going to have to try to keep order in there. Jimmy Hart and the beekeeper, his new uh, full-time assistant down here at ringside, in the animal's corner. Boy, the animal really beating on Lawler. Over in the corner, kicks him out on the apron. We've seen the animal a lot as the partner of Mr. Ito in tag action. Oh, down to the floor goes Waller. Animal down there after him. What do you think about that, Russell? What do you I think of the king now, I huh? think you ought to teach him what the ring is for, not the floor. Waller's head rammed into the turnbuckle. How can you say that with some of the things that Waller's done, huh? How can you say that? Finally back in the ring now. Lawler climbs under the bottom rope. Look out. Lawler turns around, but the animal grabs and starts to choke him. Lawler with a right hand puts it down to the mat. The fist. The strap comes down, and Lawler goes after him. Lawler falling with the right hand. Crowd says, yeah, use it. He does. The animal backed onto the rope. Looked across the ring, and Lawler hits for him with the right hand. Met him in the middle of the ring. That's illegal! That's illegal! He's not on the top rope, Jimmy. Say goodnight. Two and three. I've never been more humiliated in my life. From now on, I'm going to have results, or I'm going to get rid of everybody. This is humiliation for me. Uh, well, if you want to really get humiliated, Jimmy, take a look at it and see it again. As Jerry the King Lawler, after a slow opener, blasted him with that big right hand. Down he goes. Jimmy was hollering he's on the top rope. He wasn't, Dave, as it obviously shows. He's on the second rope, and as Lawler comes off, there it is. That's the final touch. And all it was a matter then of academic one, two, three, and it's all over with. King with a win, and there goes Hart, the animal. The beekeeper, Auspic oh, yeah, auspicious debut for the beekeeper out here as a full-time assistant. All right, I love it. I know I wasn't too happy for you in that open. I don't love that too good, Lance. Up. I don't know. Yeah, neither does the animal right now after you zeroed in on him in there. Well, I got to tell you, forget all about that match for a second. Let me do this from all the wrestling fans. Give you the congratulations on winning the big World Cup elimination Thanks. tournament. You and Hanson Jimmy be going over to Japan in January.
Well, all I want to do is uh, all I want to do is come out here and say uh, a quick thank you, and especially thank all the wrestling fans because Jimmy and I couldn't have done it without them, Lance. That's all oh, it is, too. Boy, so give, give yourself a hand. Okay. Tough tournament. And uh, the cream came to the top. You guys really survived it, and it was super. Well, it was without a doubt a tough tournament, no doubt about that. And uh, before I go any further, I had got a little tape here from Handsome Jimmy. He wanted to thank everybody, too. Could we roll it? Oh, yeah. Hey, let's take a look at it. Can we get it? Fine. I must say, the boogeyman feels good. I said, Handsome Jimmy feels good. I want to thank King Lala, Jerry the King Lala, my partner in that big tournament. We did it. We did it together with all the brothers and sisters. I want to thank you for the support. And we're not going to let you down. Neither the king or the boogeyman. I'm saying, Handsome Jimmy and the king, we gone. Woo, must say, what's that thing? Where's Kingfish? Kingfish. You know, I'm in my office. This is like Jet Land, Jack. This is Jet City right here. Me and the King is going. I think it's January the 15th. That's right. January the 15th. Thank you very much, King. January the 15th, we're going to Tokyo. I only wish it was in Russia. We show them Russian dogs in red something, Jack. But it's going to be in, whoa, messy. Tokyo, you're coming, baby. And we're not going to let the South down. Me, the Boogeyman, Hansel Jimmy, and Jerry the King Lola, we're going to be back with all the go with that big silver cup with $100,000 and we're going to drop the bomb on woo, Japan. All right. I don't know whether Japan's ready for this or not, Jerry. I don't know either, but all I can say, just like in the tournament with a partner like Handsome Jimmy, I don't see how we can lose. Do you, Lance? I'll tell you this, partner. We, uh, I don't know how the rest of the world is going to look at it from right here. You guys are going to be the favorite, and we're going to be looking for you to win that son of a gun. Well, we're going to be over there and do our dead level best and try to bring all that money and that big World Cup right back here to okay. this area. Congratulations Thanks. again, Jerry. The King and Handsome Jimmy will be going over to Japan in January, and we'll keep you posted. We got more action. That's just the beginning, folks. Stay right where you are, and we're going to be back with more of it in a second. dwell on a particular subject, but uh, the subject being Eddie Gilbert, uh, we've had a couple comments to make about the thing, but um, Eddie is, uh, we've been around and known Eddie for quite some time. There was a match that took place between the fabulous Jackie Fargo and Tommy Rich against Rick Rude and, and big King Kong Bundy. Uh, the match is worthy of showing the entire thing. We're not going to do that because I want to pick up uh, something that involved Eddie Gilbert. Let's take a look at it. We'll talk about it in a minute. There's a tag. Rude gives way to Bundy and Tommy Rich, still the object of their attention. Wing. Big elbow. And he missed that one. He would have made a little spot of Tommy on that one. Wildfire going at him. And Jackie Fargo's got heart. Lands him with a stick, trying to get away. Rich down on top of Bundy. Here comes Eddie Gilbert from the back. As Rich had... Uh, Rich had Bundy covered. The referee was out on the floor. And a referee found one, two, three. And that is going to be it. Four minutes, 56 seconds. While the referee was out of the ring, a little interference by Eddie Gilbert. Rich knows about that. He'll be after Gilbert, don't worry. But for this tournament, uh-oh. Rich and Gilbert going at it at ringside. In the ring, Fargo caught by Rude and Bundy. Jackie being worked over by Hart and Rude now as Bundy comes in, slams Rich down. The official bout is over in four minutes, 56 seconds. Rude and Bundy hammering on Jackie and Eddie Gilbert adding one last shot at Tommy. Well, he get a little fine out of hitting the referee. And Eddie Gilbert pounding away on Tommy. He's got him bleeding. He's got a boot in his hand. What he's got, Jackie Fargo, who was smashed by Rude Bundy and Hart. Tommy just bleeding all over. 
one stop. Rude and Bundy left. Yeah, that was, uh, seemed to be a rather uncalled for situation in there that uh, Eddie got involved in. Uh, we've asked Eddie to come out here and, and uh, we want to discuss it with him. conversation about it we've said that it seemed to be uncalled for I want to get your side of it. well you know Lance uh, first of all I'm glad you gave me a chance to explain this you know uh, when Tommy and I decided to split up we went to Eddie Marlin and we told him we'd no longer be wrestling as a tag team well when this tag match came up uh, Eddie said well uh, we won't need you Eddie I said we got Jackie Fargo well it kind of hit me hard I mean would anybody you know and I so I was sitting at home last Saturday when I saw it was going to be Tommy Rich and Jackie Fargo's tag team partners. So, you know, I'm a big wrestling fan too. So I decided I want to come down to the matches and, and watch them. Well, as I pull into the parking lot, as fate would have it, Tommy Rich was getting out of his car about the same time I did. And so, out of the goodness of my heart, I said, Tommy, uh, good luck tonight. And he turned around to me and he said, Eddie Gilbert, I want to tell you one thing now. If you get close to that ring, I'll make you wish you hadn't be the biggest mistake of your life. And I looked at him, I said, Tommy, you don't realize something. I could very well beat your brains out. And right there, and right, and right there in the parking lot, Tommy, Tommy seemed like a whole different person. He threw his bag down, and he started, and all the, some, maybe some of these people there too, around the fence there at the back of the Coliseum, and, and, and all of a sudden, Tommy looked like he was fixing to come after me, and it was embarrassing in public. Tommy was going to try to come after me. So, as the gentleman that I am, I just walked on in the Coliseum and left him standing there. Well, during the match, as I was standing back there watching the match with Tommy and Jackie, I started thinking, well, those people standing back at the back of the Coliseum, they probably thought I was a coward for the way I, you know, I, that I didn't talk. So I was standing back there, and I said, well, I'm not going to let him, you know, do that to me. So I went in the ring, and I beat him up. I showed these people, I showed these people what I could do and what I'm, what I'm really made of. Okay, Eddie, I accept your, your version of what happened in the parking lot. I got to say, you've got a kind of peculiar slant on it because you come jumping in a ring and jump on Rich in there, he's involved in another match. No, okay, let me say this now. I went in there and I showed the people what I could do to Tommy. And then I sat back down there, you were there, I sat back yeah. down there at the desk, and Tommy Rich jumped out of the ring on me. He started beating me up and threw me in the ring, so what could I do? I showed the people what I'm really made of and what I can do, and I left him laying in the middle of the ring. And, I, and that just goes to show that I should be having the title matches, and I should be a champion, and that maybe, when all this is over, maybe these people out here, and you, Lance Russell, and Eddie Martin will realize I should have had the title matches, but I didn't get them. And that's it. That's it. Eddie, let me Jimmy. just interrupt y'all guys. Let me just shake this man's hand right here, pal. Let me tell you what, baby, you got class. First class all the way. Hot stuff, baby. Let me, you know what? Let's, here comes the ball. No, no, no. Wait, no. See, Russell, you have to always put your big nose and two cents in everything. Why don't you shut up? Let me tell you something, man. I know class when I see it. Let me tell you something, Eddie. You know what, baby? You are going to be a superstar in this profession. You are going to be a champion one day. But you need somebody like Jimmy Hart with you at all times, baby, to advise you, to guide you. You know, there is conspiracy against you here, just like there's one against Jimmy Hart. Eddie Martin is going to protect Tommy Rich and not you. Baby, you're on the outside looking in. Let me tell you that. Then there's Jerry Lawler, Jerry the King Lawler. He's going to be jealous of you. I'm telling you, pal, you better wake up right now, right now. Sign with Jimmy Hart. You get with the family, baby, and it's all the way to the top. I promise you that, kid. All the way to the top, kid. Lance, first of all, okay, let me answer your little thing. Hart, I don't like you. I don't like your first family. Most of all, I hate what you stand for, and I don't want anything to do with you, and I want you to know that now. You know, I, I can, the kid's upset. He's upset a little bit. Let me I've been telling everybody what a great guy you are. I've been telling the whole world, baby, what a superstar you're going to be in this profession. You know, you're upset. Don't worry about it. Think it over a little bit. That's all you got to do. Yeah. No, Lance, i got to say something. That's where all this has been come from. What I'm trying to say is, all week long, people have been calling my house and calling my family. My mother and my father have been saying, why is Eddie Gilbert turning bad? And you're behind all this. You've been telling everybody that I'm going in your first family. Well, I'm not, Hart. Well, I said, what a great guy you are. I think
think you're going to be a superstar. That's what I said. But let me just say, I know you're upset. Look, from now on, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, baby. Free of charge. From now on, in all of your matches, I'm going to be sitting at ringside during your matches. I'm going to be looking over anything in case you need any help. All you got to do is call old Jimmy, baby, and I'll be right there. What do you think, buddy? I don't want you anywhere near me. I don't want you at ringside. It just, I don't want anything to do with it. Okay, I can hear the cheese trying to get him in the Hey, I love young people, baby. He's you. He is the future in professional wrestling. He's a little upset. Don't worry about it, Russell. You just sit back here and commentate. Let him wrestle. I'm going to be right here at ringside, baby. Uh, he didn't want you, Jimmy. I don't know whether you got that. It's kind of hard to get through to this guy, boy. I'll tell you. Okay, Dave. It's going to be a one fall 15-minute time limit match. Introducing from Memphis, Tennessee at 215 pounds. On the right of the screen, Ken Raper going against him from Lexington, Tennessee. 206 pounds, Eddie Gilbert. One ball, 15 minute time limit. Jerry Calhoun is the referee. As the bell sounds, Ken Raper, Eddie Gilbert. Raper with a little size advantage on uh, Eddie. Ought to be a doggone good single match as uh, Raper has had some experience, you better believe, with some awfully good wrestlers in there. Eddie Gilbert, likewise. Whoa! Eddie going after, and the referee telling him, keep those fists open. I love that fire. Look at that fire, baby. Look yeah. at it. it looks he, great. Look, he looks like he's been to your school already. They ought to call round. him Wildfire. Wildfire Eddie Gilbert. <laughs> okay, Jimmy. Eddie Gilbert really going after Ken Raper. Blasting him with that right hand again, and the referee, Jerry Calhoun, Steps back in and tells him, come on, watch the fist. Fires Raper in, big backdrop, and Eddie Gilbert right at the moment. He's king of the hill as he is banging away on uh, Ken Raper, and the referee about to disqualify him. Raper battling back now, coming after Gilbert. Uh-oh, Eddie nails him and puts him back down again. Eddie Gilbert grabs the hair, picks him up, Suplex, Raper over and down, and Eddie, and I'll agree with Hart, there's no question of the potential that this young man has. He comes out of a wrestling family, drops down with that knee right down on Raper. Eddie Gilbert grabs the hair and rubs Ken Raper's head right down in the mat, the referee has to forcibly break him up in there and about ready to disqualify him in the single action with Ken Raper. We're around the two minute mark as uh, Gilbert, I think caught Raper by surprise and really started unloading. Yeah, fine, Jimmy. Jimmy Hart sitting out here cheerleading like he's already in the first family. And he told him he wanted nothing to do with it. But he's wrestling like our first family member. Big elbow and down, Raper goes. Gilbert again to the hair, picks Raper up. Pops him across the ring. And the press. There he will, baby, the Tommy Rich, I mean the Eddie Gilbert press. I knew it. The Eddie Gilbert press, a winner, baby, victorious. I love this kid. He's going to be a good addition to the family. I love him, baby. Woo! I'm going into family, Jimmy. He's already said that. Time on it was two minutes, 33 seconds, 2.33. Well, he, uh, he certainly, I don't know which came first, the chicken or the egg, but he learned something in the tag thing. Like using, let's take a look at the uh, press that he used. You've seen Tommy Rich use it a jillion times. Jimmy Hart comes out here and changes it around to uh, the Eddie Gilbert press as uh, he whips Raper in. There he comes. There's the big press, and it was good enough to get a one, two, three. Gilbert comes out the winner in it and uh, is successful in his single action in here against Ken Raper. We've got more big action. Hickerson and the spoiler against the new generation. Coming up a little later, we'll be back to it in just a moment. Well, of course, we can't let it go by. Tommy, uh, as you know, Dave was not going to be here today, so we asked uh, some comments from Tommy Rich. And we have those for you on videotape. Let's listen to the wildfire. 
You know, Eddie, I've been sitting around all week, man, trying to figure out what happened last Monday night. Or for the past, you know, for the past couple of weeks, what's been the matter with you, man? And all I can figure out is that, that somehow you've got jealous of me. Because I, I remember the past few weeks you rode up and down the road. I asked you something. You've been like in another world, man. You ain't had nothing to say to me. But any other time we've had any problems, we've always sat down and we've talked it out. Just like brothers do, man. But I'm going to tell you what, brothers don't do that. Look at my eye, Eddie. Brother, I want you to look and think about what you've done. Not just to me, but all the people there in Memphis, Tennessee, and all around that area that looked up to you, Eddie Gilbert. All the little kids, man. You think about it and think hard. Because I'm telling you, Eddie, it just ain't right, man. You know, you've cost me a Southern heavyweight title. And I look back, you was the one that gave me the call and said, Tommy, let me be your special referee because that way you'll have a 50-50 chance. And with a man like Bundy, I said, well, that's a good idea. So I went to Eddie Marlin and I told him the idea. And he said it sounded good. But when I look back at the film, you're standing right there doing the same thing Jim Jamison done. Jim Jamison was young, didn't have the experience. Refereeing job's a hard job, I know that. But, Eddie, what I'm telling you is, last Monday night you come down in our match with Jackie Fargo and myself and cost us $100,000. But that ain't so much either. Just like I said, I want you to look at that eye because I'm coming to Memphis. That's the reason I'm not at TV. I don't want to see you until Monday night right there in Memphis. And when I see you, I want to be looking you eyeball to eyeball right across that ring because I'm going to tell you something, Eddie. I'm going to tell you, the way you saw something like this, you know, I had my run in with Buzz Sawyer. You know, I don't know if it was jealousy that you thought I was going to get the shot at Ric Flair for the national, for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship or what the problem was, but there's no reason that we couldn't have sat down and talked about it. But no, you didn't want to talk about it. You wanted to jump in from my back and bust my eye open. Well, I'm telling you, Eddie, you take it any way you want to. I don't know if you're having family trouble or what the problem is, but Monday night in Memphis, I'm coming to straighten it out. It's going to be a good old fight because I tell you what, Eddie, if you was my brother, you'd have never done what you did to me right there in Memphis, Tennessee. So I'm coming, and Monday night, you're going to be all mine all night long, brother. Well, I don't think there's any question that uh, it's beyond sitting down and talking over now that Tommy Rich has no desire to do that anymore, and they will be meeting on Monday night as one of the action-packed uh, bouts that will be taking place on the card Monday. While we're talking about that, let's go over the entire action. Remember, you can get your tickets today up until uh, 5 o'clock right down at the Coliseum. Get them in advance, and of course, all day on Monday, you're going to have the opportunity to do exactly the same thing. Get them all day in advance, and you'll be there in time at 8 o'clock when the new generation will be going against the nightmares and I uh, can assure you that is going to be a whale of a match to open it up with. Tojo Yamamoto and Mr. Ito will be facing each other and a couple of Japanese warlords will have lots to say, you bet, when they get in that ring going against each other. Dutch Mantel will be facing the animal in a single match. That to be followed by a Southern Tag Team title match when Phil Hickerson and the Spoilers will be going against the very red-hot Rock and Roll Express, Rick Morton and Robert Gibson. Jerry Lawler will be going against Rick Rude. Now, this is a single match. We've had some conversation back and forth with these guys. We've had a little tag action and so forth. I got a feeling Monday night it is going to be bubbling over when the action department comes together with Lawler and Rude. And then another single match. Same kind of feelings. Tommy Rich, Eddie Gilbert, and there's nothing hardly any worse than seeing two partners that uh, were partners split up, get hating each other, and really go after it. You better believe Rich is going to be trying to bust Eddie open just exactly the way Eddie did in their last confrontation. And then the final event. King Kong Bundy and Rick Rude with Jimmy Hart. Now, that's a very impressive and imposing team indeed. Bundy and Rude going against the team of Steve Kern and the fabulous Jackie Fargo. Of course, Jackie uh, originally started the fabulous ones, Kern and Lane, and he's got Steve coming back as his partner. Jackie, of course, is not one to take uh, a little beating lying down for a fact. He's ready to get up and use anything that he has to to do it. Well, let's listen to what Jackie has to say. 
You know, when I came to Memphis last week, I really was looking forward to it. I had no idea if I was walking into uh, such a feud between Tommy and Eddie that I did. Well, anyway, that's, that's out of my hands now. I'm going to let them fight each other and may the best man win. I know one thing now, I'm feuding. I got a problem. Hart, Bundy, and Rude, they, they maul me, Pally, and I'm not used to that. You maul me one-on-one, -on -one, and I'll get up and shake your hands and hit you back in the nose or something. But when three of you jump me, I don't like it, and I'm not going to stand for it. Now, over my years of professional wrestling, uh, my brother and I can whip ten teams, and I got a guy that I can call that we can whip anybody. I need help, and, and hundreds of guys have called me. I can name them right here that's called me, and I come to the rescue. Now, I need some help, and I picked up the phone, and I called him one of my fabs, Steve Kern. And he was booked in New York, Minneapolis. I said, forget that. I need you, Pally. And this Monday night, Steve Kern will be my partner. Hart, you, Rude, and Bundy listen real good. I'm sure you know who the Fabs are. And I don't think that your boys, Rude and Bundy, quite know what I can do. How mean and rough and tough that I really am. Well, let me show you something, pal. I'm going to tell you just how mean and rough and tough I can be Monday night. So when Steve and I, the fabulous Steve Kern and the fabulous Jackie Vargo, Pally, get on with you, you little stupid punk, you heart. I hate you, boy. I hate you, and it's a sin to hate, but I hate you. Because you're a no-good, dirty, low-down rat. Do you understand me? Rude, do you think you're a pretty boy? And Bundy, you think you're big and strong? Well, put it all together, pal. Get it together. Monday night, the fabulous Steve Kern and the Fab, baby. We'll be right there, pally. Bring the best you got. I tell you, Dave, we have seen uh, we have seen him use a lot of things in there. So Monday night it will be happening down there. Jimmy Hart will be at ringside. Let me tell you something. Good Look at me with my Japanese outfit, baby. I was all dressed up, but now I've got no place to go. We were going to Tokyo, Japan. I had three tickets. I had my Japanese outfit. A hundred thousand dollars split three ways between us. You know what that cost me? Thirty-three thousand three hundred thirty-three dollars and thirty-three cents, Fargo. And nobody does that to me. Does he, Bundy? Let me tell you something, Fargo. You cost us a lot of money, and now, baby, you're gonna feel the wrath of the first family. You can get on this TV and talk all night long about how mean you are and how tough you are. You're just like every other hillbilly from Tennessee. All you can do is talk. You're all mouth and no action. Well, let me tell you something. In Atlantic City, we take care of business, and we're gonna take care of you. You can bring in Steve Kern, one of the new fads, one of the old fads. It don't matter. You can bring a chain. A trash can, whatever you're talking about bringing two by fours, you better bring it all, Fargo, and you better pack a lunch if you're talking about beating the most devastating team in professional wrestling today, King Kong Bundy and Rick Root. Look at this team, 450 pounds, 250 pounds, brick house. Who's going to beat us? Nobody. Fargo, you stuck your nose where it doesn't belong, and you're going to pay for it. Right, Ricky? $100,000, Lance. $100,000. You know, I'm going to call him. Jackie Far gone, because you got to be gone, brother, sticking your nose in my business. Shut up! Let me tell you something, Lance. I got a lot on my mind right now, and I'm sure you know what it's all about. But I don't need much space to think about Jackie Fargo and Steve Kern. And you know what? When we're done, Bundy, I got something. We're going to do something called the Bundy Boogie all over them two folks. So you remember that, the Bundy Boogie. These are not well, new I'm comers. personally, Lance Russell, I'm talking. I'm personally going to stomp you like a bug and squash you like the dog that you are. Thunder and lightning together, baby. I promise you it's going to be something else. Fargo, come on down, baby. I'm going to give you a tonsillectomy down there with my cane this week. Come on, baby. Jimmy, you sound like you already had one. Well, you'll find out what I was trying to tell you. These are not neophytes, newcomers that you're going to be facing. Both of them, Fargo and Kern, know how to dish it out, too. I think you saw a little sample of that. We'll take time out. We've got something to dish out, and we'll be back with action in a moment. <laughs> Yeah, 
manager, Kojo Yamamoto. They're a pretty exciting tag team themselves. They uh, picked up the advice and counsel of Kojo Yamamoto. They're going to need a bunch, though, as here comes the Southern Tag Champion, Bill Hickerson in the spoiler. We're ready for the official introduction, Dave. One fall, 15-minute time limit, total weight of 521 pounds. Climbing up on the left side of your screen there. From Parts Unknown, the spoiler, and from Jackson, Tennessee, Phil Hickerson, wearing the Southern Tag Team belts. Going against them, total weight of 442 pounds with their manager, Dojo Yamamoto. From Charleston, West Virginia, and Lexington, Kentucky, Mark Batten and Johnny Wilhoyt, the new generation. One fall, 15-minute time limit. Terry Calhoun is the referee. Woogie! We've still got four in the ring, but it'll be down to two as the spoiler hops out on that side. Mark Batten jumps out. It'll be Wilhoyt, Bill Hickerson. This is a, a great opportunity for the new generation to go on a non-title bout against Hickerson and the spoiler. And here we go, Dave. Bill Hickerson, big one, mean one, out of Jackson, Tennessee. Going against Johnny Wilhoyt. Johnny out of Lexington, Kentucky. Backed onto the ropes. Hickerson swings that right hand. Hickerson with that powerful right arm, and he likes to use it in the match, but he missed that time. As Johnny Wilhoyt ducked out of the way. New generation managed by the veteran Tojo Yamamoto. Hickerson looked at Will Hoyt out of the corner. Will Hoyt reversed him. And Phil Hickerson's the one that went tumbling on the mat. Tag made by the new generation. This is Mark Batten coming in. Mark's out of Charleston, West Virginia. A couple of young wrestlers, Batten and Will Hoyt. Most of you wrestling fans know the story. They uh, felt that the tag team wasn't going anywhere, so they called Tojo Yamamoto and said, hey, manage it. We need help. Since Tojo's been with them, well, they have really put together some impressive wrestling. Mm. Going against one of the tough ones, though, in Phil Hickerson, and another tough one waiting over in his corner. He goes over there for the tag and the spoiler. Hickerson puts a flip on Batten, drops down with a right fist. He's warned by the referee. I doubt it'll do any good. There's the spoiler jumping in. Hickerson leaves the mass spoiler, puts Batten into the rope, clotheslines him coming off of there. Right hand. The spoiler with Batten in the air puts a body slam on him. You can see Johnny Willowit, his partner, wimps over in the corner. He's reaching for the tag. Batten's still too far away from it. Hickerson picks him up. Power slams him down to the mat. He just drove him right down. Hickerson followed with his own 262 pounds. Well, Hickerson steps out. The spoiler puts the backdrop on Mark Batten. The backbreaker by the spoiler. He covers, count is at one, but he picks him up by the hair. One count is all he got. The backdrop. Mark Batten really being worked on here by the spoiler. Spoiler body slams it. Two minutes, 45 seconds gone. We're very near that three-minute mark. Bill Hickerson steps back in. Hickerson hit him with a knee and turned him a flip in midair. Count of one, and Hickerson picks him up. Bill Hickerson and the spoiler after the tag make the exchange into the ropes again goes Mark Batten the knee by the spoiler he saw Hickerson use it count is one and spoiler picks him up at the one count again hey Hickerson over here talking to us about how great they were doing it Johnny Wilhoyt nails him from behind Hickerson goes after Will Hoyt now with a right hand here's referee Jerry Calhoun trying to get them apart meanwhile in the ring the spoiler Hits Batten with uh, an upper arm. Yeah, Hickerson. Mack and Will Hoyt. Will Hoyt battling him back. 
Kojo. Out into the ring with those wooden shoes, batting with a cover on the spoiler. Kojo gets the referee and said, hey, what's happening in the ring? That was one, two, and three. That's it. Referee didn't see what happened. But the new generation has a victory here. We've got it on tape. Take a look at it. You can see what happened. As Hickerson is most upset, and you will see why. All right, there's the referee out on the floor. He's trying to get Hickerson and Johnny Wilhoyt separated. Keep your eye on the right side of the ring up there as the referee is trying to get a back. See, there's Kojo goes under the rope, wooden shoes in hand. The spoiler nailed in the back of the head. Batten falls down on top of him. The re referee now sent to the ring by Tojo. He counts one, two, three, and the new generation has a win, and Hickerson, and the spoiler, there they are, we're back live now. And you can see how quietly upset they are. I think maybe better that way than the other way. Yeah. But they lost the match. New Generation gets the win. The other hand's Championship raised. Championship Wrestling has not been kind to Hickerson and Spoiler. Recently, recently you're right. <laughs> it has had not. a bad stay with the uh, Rock and Roll Express, and now the New Generation pulling a little of their stuff mm -hmm. on them. And so, why a win for the New Generation. That'll get some attention to promoters. You better believe that. Okay, we're going to take time out. We still got lots of it to go. We got the Nightmares and the Rock and Roll Express. Boy, that'll be a dandy. We're going to be back with more action in a moment. Really exciting win for the new generation uh, in there just a moment ago. We've got the Rock and Roll Express coming up against the Nightmares. Uh, before we get to it, Want to take time out once again to talk to the king. This time we're not talking about World Cup uh, Tag Championship. No, I wanted to come out here and talk for just a second about uh, my match that's coming up. You know, I, I saw Rick Rude and King Kong Bundy. Well, you couldn't help but see Bundy. He takes up the entire screen. Yes. You know, I guess the reason he wasn't wearing a shirt, I don't think anybody makes one big enough to fit that fat slob. Now, let me tell you something, Bundy. You can run your mouth about how big and how bad you are, brother, but your day is coming, believe me. But before I get to you, I'm going to take care of Rick Rude. Now, do you, do you realize the audacity that Rick Rude must have to think that... Did you, did you look at the way that card is aligned there? Yeah. Rick, Rick yeah. Rude is wrestling me, and then he thinks he's going to be able to come back and wrestle Jackie Fargo and Steve Wrestling Kirk. there with Bundy is his partner. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Rude. I heard Rude stand out here and say, I got a lot on my mind. He's got a lot on his mind, huh? Is that right? That's what he said. Do you know, if you took Rick Rude's brain and shoved it in a gnat's rear, it'd rattle around like a BB in a boxcar. Now, let me tell you something, Rude. You ain't got a brain to begin with, brother. Especially if you think that you're going to look past me to Jackie Fargo and Steve Kern, because I got a score to settle with you. Now, I know what you're talking about when you say you got a lot on your mind. You're real upset. You're real hot, because you no longer have a female valet. Well, I'll take that back. He's still got heart. But he don't have Angel. He don't have Angel to carry his, uh, all his garb back to the dressing room and to kiss him every time he gets hurt because she is still laid up somewhere courtesy of the king. And let me tell you something, Rick Rude. I can't wait till Monday night because I'm looking forward to doing the exact same thing to you that I did to her. I'm going to drop you on that pointed little head of yours, and I'm going to stick you up like a spear in the middle of that ring. And if you can still get in the ring with Jackie Fargo and Steve Kern after I get through with you, then you're a better man than I think you are. But, brother, I don't think there's going to be anything left of you when I'm done. Okay, Lance? Okay, that sounds straight enough and you're telling it just the way you feel it, Jerry. We're looking forward to that particular match. As a matter of fact, all of them. We'll talk about that later. Right now, Dave, how about telling us what's happening around the territory? Got a lot of it coming up beginning tonight over in West Helena, Arkansas, at the National Guard Armory, Hart, Tojo Yamamoto, Mr. Ito, New Generation Nightmares, the animal will all be there. Friday, August 17th, Milan, Tennessee. This is going to be at the air-conditioned high school gym. Lawler, Rich, Gilbert, Rock and Roll Express, King Kong Bundy, all will be up in Milan on Friday night. Sunday night, the 19th in Lexington, Tennessee, at the new school gym. Jimmy Hart will be there. Hickerson and the Spoiler also on the card. New Generation will be there, too, Sunday the 19th in Lexington. On uh, Friday, August 24th, Championship Wrestling will be in Carothersville, Missouri. 
Tickets are on sale right now. You'll be able to see Tojo Yamamoto, Jimmy Hart, Savage and Poffo. Poffo Mania will be in Carothersville, Missouri on Friday the 24th. Next night, Saturday the 25th, Jonesboro, Arkansas. Box office will be open at 3 o'clock on that afternoon. Rich will be there. Dutch Mantel on the card. Eddie Gilbert, seven great matches in all in Jonesboro on Saturday the 25th. Tuesday the 28th, Trenton, Tennessee. This will be at the uh, Gibson County Fair. If you buy your ticket in advance, it will mean that you get in the fair free. So buy your tickets in advance for a Gibson County Fair uh, Championship Wrestling up in Trenton. That'll be on Tuesday night, the 28th. And then on Friday the 31st, Pontotoc, Mississippi at North Pontotoc High School. Saturday, September 1st in Water Valley, Mississippi. And on Sunday, September 2nd, Championship Wrestling coming to Jackson, Tennessee for a big Labor Day special. That's the action coming up. Don't forget tonight, West Helena, Arkansas at the National Guard Armory for Championship Wrestling action. Lance? Ooh. Hey, we're about ready for it. We got big action coming in here. Rock and Roll Express. We got the Nightmares uh, coming in, and that, my friend, ought to be some kind of an excellent expiration of time. Jimmy, let me say something, Russell. West Helena, Arkansas, baby, tonight you ain't seen nothing yet. You know, Tojo. Rude and Lawler, what a great feud, but Tojo, let me tell you something, baby, I'm going to bring some black paint over there to West Hill tonight, we're going to paint some hair on your head like I did that little puke last week. I'm bringing the whole first family, I want you to be there too tonight, Russell. Come on, Ricky, what are we going to do, baby? We got a match coming up, Rick, here. Shut up. Hey, come on now. Hey, listen. Jimmy. Don't tell me when the match is on, I'll tell you. Now, let me tell you something. I said I had a few things on my mind, didn't I, Lance? Now, I think it's time to get him off. Give me that microphone. Jerry Lawler, you come out here and you talk like a big man. Jerry Lawler, you come out here and you talk like a big man. You costed me my heavyweight title. You punched out my valet. And now you crippled her up. What did he say my brain was like? What, a BB in a boxcar and a gnat hinder? Let me tell you something, Lawler. I don't need much of a brain to rub you off, punk. You know, Lance, you ever have a feeling where you hate somebody so bad? You hate somebody so bad, you, whatever damage you can do to them can't be enough. I could beat Jerry Lawler to a pulp, put him in a wheelchair, make him a vegetable, and it still wouldn't be enough for me, Lance. I hate you so bad, Lawler. I want to wreck you. I want to wreck your home. I want to wreck all your relatives. And you know what, Lance? Jerry Lawler, you can't wait till Monday night. Well, let me tell you something, punk. I can't wait till Monday night either. I just can't wait. Jimmy, Jimmy. Come here, Russell. I want you to walk with me over here, Russell. Come here. Come, come on, on, Jimmy. Russell. Now, come what on. is all this here, stuff? Russell, we got on. a match come coming up come here. On, hey, Rude. Come with me, Russell. Come come me. What are you doing?
that's the kind of mentality that you spawn in that doggone thing. He is out there knocking the windshield out of Lawler's car. Oh, boy, that is brilliant. Just brilliant. He tore the windshield right out of, out of Jerry Lawler's car. Well, he's the one that's going to have to pay for it. Uh-oh, here comes Lawler. Get him, Jerry. Lawler going after him. They out there, who was that? Oh, Bundy, out there waiting on a car, and there's Hart. Oh, that is sick. Goes out there with a ball bat and knocks the windshield out, beat on Lawler's car. how low Hart and that first family can get. Lawler came running after him. Uh, uh. And they had Bundy sitting out in the car. There's Jerry looking over what's been done. Jerry, who had wrestled earlier on championship wrestling in the event that you didn't see it. They got him back out of the shower. Well, okay. Mama said there'd be days like this. Lee took a ball bat and absolutely just shattered Lawler's windshield beat on the car walked all over it huh? yeah okay all right let's take a break and uh, we'll be back with action in the ring. In case you just uh, you see that hole, that's courtesy of Rick Rude, too, yes. but that's insignificant compared to the hole that he put in Lawler's windshield out there. Hey, uh, there's Lawler's car right there outside in the parking lot outside of our championship wrestling studio. That idiot, Rude, comes in here with a baseball bat, slams a hole in our desk, goes outside, Gets hard to tell him where Lawler's car is. He beats the windshield out of it. Stomped all over his Lincoln. Man, I am telling you, I don't know what to do. But I think we have seen everything that Hart can foment. Now, he's behind it. I don't care what you say about it. Ruth did it. But Hart's the one behind it. And then they had Bundy out there waiting in the car to drive them off yeah. so they could jump in the car and get out of there when Lawler came out. Yeah, okay. Rock and Roll Express and uh, Nightmares coming up in our expiration of time match. Here come the uh, Nightmares in with the beekeeper, referee Jerry Calhoun. Waiting for Rock and Roll Express. There they are. Okay, Dave, let's have the official introduction. It's going to be a match to the expiration of time. Introducing at a total of 422 pounds from parts unknown with their manager, not Jimmy Hart, but the beekeeper out here, the Nightmares. And going against them at a total of 437 pounds from Nashville, Tennessee and Pensacola, Florida, Rick Morton, Robert Gibson, the Rock and Roll Express.
This match will be due the expiration of time. The referee, Jerry Calhoun. Hogan! Bell Jarman here with us. Starting out to nightmare number two, I believe it is, yeah, against Rick Morton, Dave. Yeah, nightmare number two, Rick Morton. Ready to go. This one might go one fall, might go four or five. As long as there's time, we got wrestling for you. Morton. Nightmare number two. Both a couple of battlers. Gibson. And after nightmare number one now as the nightmares have made the change. Nightmare bounces out of the corner. Robert Gibson with the backdrop. Then an arm block and rolled it down. Advantage Rock and Roll Express so far in the match. We're two minutes into the action. Two minutes gone. First fall. Robert Gibson taking on either one of them. That's nightmare number two back in there now. Whoa. Rick Morton from behind. Stopped the fist. And the nightmare was going to throw at Robert Gibson. Rick stays in there after the tag made. The way the match started. Rick Morton against uh, against uh, Nightmare Number Two. Middle of the ring. Robert sneaking in there. Now the Nightmare issuing a threat of some sort to Robert Gibson back in the corner. We're coming up on the three minute mark. Back in the corner. Right there. Fire in the right fist twice. Rick Burton reverses him. Morton with a flying head scissors. And the Nightmare heads for the corner in the tag. Rock and roll in control makes the tag. Robert Gibson will be going against Nightmare number two. by Robert Gibson. Nightmare grabs him by the hair. Yanked him down to the mat. Boy, that, just as he went by, he grabbed his hair. Nightmare seizing control of the match here. Off the middle rope. Nightmare number two drops down on Robert Gibson. Robert falls back to the corner. Nightmare after him. Whips him across the ring into the turnbuckles, and Robert bounces over the turnbuckles, hanging upside down here. Nightmare flips him back into the ring. Here comes.
him the other nightmare going to work on Robert. Rick Morton trying to get to him to help him out. He's sent back to the corner by the referee. Double team by the Nightmares off the rope. Double upper arm and the elbow drop by the Nightmare number two. There's a knee. He covers one, two. Two count is all he gets. There's a tag made by the Nightmares. Robert Gibson back near the corner, gets the tag. Here comes Rick. Rick Morton going to work against both of them. Dumps the Nightmare. Drops down with the right hand. Over to the corner. Robert climbing the ropes. He's on the middle rope. Jumps over there with the right hand. Nightmare on the mat. Count is two. At the two county places. Whoa. As Robert is swinging back, he kneels the other one standing out on the apron. Now rock and roll both there together. Double upper arm. Robert leaves. Rick with a cover. Count of two. The other nightmare jumps in to break it up at the two count. Six minutes gone in this ball. Rock and roll express again with a double move. There's a cover by Robert. One. This time the other nightmare gets there at the one count. Referee tangled in the action here briefly. Rick with a drop kick. Rick drops down on him. Count is one, two, two near the corner. Too easy for the nightmare and the other one to get there and break it up. Rick turns his attention to him. Robert comes in to keep the other one busy. Kicks him out of the ring down onto the floor. Now rock and roll going to work against Nightmare number two. He hangs onto the rope, steps out of the ring. Look out, beekeeper up on the apron. He slips into the ring by Robert. They send him into the rope, drop kick him. He rolls out of there. You can't get a Nightmare, grab a beekeeper. That's right. And the beekeeper, I don't know, he may go back to part-time work with Jimmy Hart after this. Look uh -oh. out, Robert nails the Nightmare. He has something on his hand, too, Dave, that's it. Nightmare has gotten the win here. That was a chain or something that he had wrapped around his hand. Nightmares get the win in the first fall. Seven minutes, 16 seconds was the time. I don't know whether we caught that or not, but I'm sure that he had something in his hand uh, before he got Rick in there and nailed it. Yeah, look, right there, yeah, you can see it. Yeah. We're like the referee. We were watching the ring and just caught a glimpse right there of something on his hand. And he nails Rick Morton. And out he goes. And the king. Jerry, what can I say? What can you say? What can you say? What can I say? Let me just real quickly say this to Rick Rude, brother. You better listen, and you better listen real good. It takes a real tough man to go out in the parking lot and bust somebody's windshield out of their car. That's doing a lot of damage to me, isn't it, Rude? That makes you real tough. Well, let me tell you something, brother. I'm going to bust you just like you busted that windshield. Wait till I get you in the ring, you jerk. There's not going to be any valets. There's not going to be any windshields. But I'll tell you what you better have. You better have Bundy, and you better have Hart standing by in a fast car just like you did then, brother, because they're going to need it to hold you to the hospital when I get through with you. I don't blame him. Not one bit. I don't think he's so much interested in uh, getting everything paid for as he's taking it out of somebody's hide. Let us, we'll be back in a minute. Oh, started off pretty sane. <laughs> Uh, you got that right, man. It is a wild day today, no question about it. And I'm sure that the Rock and Roll Express are a whole lot more concerned after what the nightmares did right here. And uh, I, it was one of those things. It's hard. There's so much happening in there. You just can't keep your eye on it. Well, here, here come, here come some other folks that are not too happy either. And I mean, Phil Hickerson in the spoiler, they had a little... <laughs> what you're laughing about, you guys uh, ran up against a new generation today. There's some serious, serious training here, man. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Serious training. Uh, right, spoiler? 
Yes, we're ready. Yeah, what do you want to talk about today? Anything you want to ask me? Well, I would just like ask to me. I'm a man. I'm a man of a thousand words, man. Just you ask know me. that you're going up against a uh, team in the Rock and Roll Express in the very near future. That uh, my friend uh, has some wins over the team of Hickerson and Sparks. <laughs> like I say, man, we've been training, like? training hard, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, man, we go to gym. You know, back in 1979, I was Mr. Universe. You realize that? Just a couple more weeks, man, my old body be back just like it was. You know what I'm talking about? Oh. Right, Fuller? <laughs> like I said, man, you're talking about winning. Let them win all they want to. Right here is the name of the game, brother. You got the That's belt. right. Okay. Anybody can win, but right here, brother, you got to be the champion. That's the main thing. That's what it's all about coming up Monday night, partner. These are going to be said, on the line. You, we're in training, man. Ain't nobody going to beat us. Who can beat us? Ain't like nobody you. done it now. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Four weeks ago. A heck of a lot better. A lot better. I can tell with all that serious training in there. Are <laughs> you believe it? Those are our Southern Tag Champions. Bill Hickerson and the Spoiler trying to laugh off the Rock and Roll Express. They may have a little difficulty doing that when it comes Monday night. Listen, let me run over the entire card once again in case you got in late. Uh, Monday night, we're in action, obviously, at 8 o'clock. You can get your tickets up until 5 o'clock. But I'll tell you, after what happened today, if, nothing, if they didn't have any other match but that one match of Lawler and Root, I want to see it. But plenty of action going on as the new generation will be going against the Nightmares. That'll be a dandy for a living fact. Then comes a single match. It'll be a good one, too. Yamamoto going against Ito. Following that will be uh, Dutch Mantel facing the Animal. And then the Southern Tag Championship bout with Hickerson and the Spoiler, two excellent examples of great physical specimen. In training every minute of the day, will be defending their titles against the Rock and Roll Express. And as hot as Rick and Robert are right now, they probably are looking forward to that with plenty of glee. Jerry Lawler goes against Rick Root. What else do I need to say? Believe me, friend, that is going to be a collision and a half, as will be the Tommy Rich Eddie Gilbert match coming up after Lawler and Root. Coliseum will not be the same after those two, and then it's just beginning. Look at this. Steve Kern, Jackie Fargo, the fabulous one, going against King Kong, Bundy, and Rick Rude. And Rick Rude is a question mark, because if Lawler has his way about it, Rude will not even be anywhere near able to get in that ring to come back with a tag match. We'll just find out about it. All of that's happening Monday night. We hope maybe you're going to make your plans to come on down and join us in there. There's action like you have never seen anywhere else. And if you haven't been to championship wrestling, my friend, I tell you, you can combine every kind of event you think of, and you'll never see action just exactly the way it is with championship wrestling. Come on down and be sure and watch us. We want to get Rick and Robert out here and see if we can talk to them a second before they get back in the ring. Because they do have a uh, Southern Tag Team Championship match coming up. And uh, they'll be going against a team that you may have seen right here on Championship Wrestling. They beat them twice, got a third win in a uh, disqualification. So they had three wins in a row over the Southern Tag Champs. And you saw Hickerson and Spoiler maybe uh, standing out here. They're in shape and in training. <laughs> they look great. Well, you know, Lance, me and Robert's been on the road for a pretty good while now, but we've got a lot of things on our mind. I think sometimes I think my head needs a rest. But let me tell you something, Phil Hickerson and the Spoiler. We're coming down to the Mid-South Coliseum. But this time, there's no time limit, no disqualification. If you go over the top rope this time, brother, the match is not going to be stopped. And we got one thing, one thing on our mind, brother, and that's to put those Mid-South Tag Team belts around our waist. And I grant you this, and I promise all you nice people, after Monday night, you're going to see the new Mid-South Tag Team Champions, brother, and you won't see no more Rock and Roll Express. Woo! No disqualification, that's something we haven't told the folks about on there, Robert, so that's going to be something else when you guys tangle in that match. You know, the DQ, that's not Dairy Queen, baby. That means no disqualification. So Hickson, Spoiler, crank it up, shine that belt up real good. Congratulations, I'll make a promise to you and everybody else, baby. You look at the next champions right here, baby. Whoa, all right. We're going to be looking forward to seeing those guys in action in that. Right now, they've got some other action. There's the Nightmares. Look out, Dave. Nightmares well, I'll tell you, it starts, floor. and it just keeps going on. Before Rick and Robert ever got back in the ring, the Nightmares jumped him. Now it's Rick pounding away on one, and Robert going after the other. 
Rick Martin, Robert Gibson. They lost the first ball to the Nightmares as uh, the Nightmares combined with Chains and the beekeeper to come out with a victory in it right now. Robert in with Nightmare number two as he tags out to number one. Referee Jerry Calhoun, we're in the second fall. Rick and Robert need this one to tie it up. They're one fall down. Wow. They do work well together. Tell you one thing, with all of the traveling and battling that Rick and Robert have been doing, their total attitude has changed, and they have no hesitation at all about pulling down the hammer when they have to on any team. Three minutes to go in our expiration of time match. Rick and Robert are one fall down. The nightmare, number one, tangles up with Rick Morton. Tag on number two, and here he comes. Last Rick before the nightmare number one would let go of him. This nightmare team. They have battled the very best that we've seen around, and brother, they don't ever go down easy. They are a tough team. Rick and Robert finding that out right now. The Nightmares up one ball. Bam, double hand right down on Rick Morton. Number one back in in action. One, two, and boy, I thought that could hurt the Rock and Roll Express. You got that right. Yeah, he Close line. Down is one, two, and a two count is where it breaks. Boy, they, uh, Rick and Robert need to take control of this match. If you let the Nightmares control the tempo of the match, they're going to beat you. They won the first ball that way. They seized control of it about midway through, and then they just hammered at the Rock and Roll Express and got the win. It took a chain to do it, but they got the victory in the first ball. Rick and Robert need a win right here. Slamming Rick Morton over in the corner. The nightmare number two really pouring it to him. Robert Gibson hanging in the corner waiting for a tag if his partner is inclined to get at it. There's a whip across the ring. Rick rolls it down. Two. what they can do to you. I mean, right out of nowhere, they can blow you out. And they win that second ball of action. Beautiful move in there. It's now one ball apiece. And look at how, with the swiftness that the Rock and Roll Express can strike, because Rick Morton was hurt. He had been worked over in that ball. And all of a sudden, it all changed. There's Rick being shoved across the ring into the turnbuckle. Nightmare thinking he's got him ready for a second win. He comes piling in after him. Rick over the top, hooks his leg, takes him right over and down into a pin position. And all it takes is a one, two, three, and the Rock and Roll Express even it up. The time, my friend, is running short, but the Rock and Roll Express pulled it right out of the wire. We're going to take time out. We'll check our exact time. Be back in a moment. Oh, hey, let me run over a couple of things. You want to keep up with wrestling? Monday night, you be sure and uh, tune in Action News 5, 10 o'clock. Big Jack will have all the action on Tuesday night at, at 5 o'clock. He has uh, some footage on it, too, so you can see it. By the way, at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, the King will be here with the Jerry Lawler Show. Eddie Gilbert will um, be his uh, one of his guests in there, and he'll have an opportunity to maybe get more depth than we've been able to. Some representative of Wrestling Fans International will be there tomorrow. That's 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, the Jerry Lawler Show. Right after we're through here, the Cubs and the Expos will be coming up. Dave, I don't think we've got time to run well, over too that. Too much action here to cover. I think. Well, I want to tell you, today we had one, and I guess the low point was when Rick Rude goes roaring out in the parking lot and slams the windshield out of Jerry Lawler's car. That, too, shall pass, and we 
We'll see you Monday night at the Coliseum. Until that time for Dave Brown, Lance Russell saying bye-bye, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling. Thank you.